In this video, I will be speaking to Dr. Samuelian about what it means to identify multiple perspectives pertaining to a research question. I think the concept of multiple perspectives has the potential of being very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. How does one start? Yeah, you know, I think the thing that most often catches students up with the idea of multiple perspectives is that they get the sense that engaging multiple perspectives is going to make their job harder. It's going to make the research process bigger um, and more overwhelming. And I think, in fact, it does the opposite. If a student has um, a really carefully thought research question, and we can talk more about that in a minute if you'd like, um, then really engaging in multiple perspectives simply makes the research easier. It makes it easier to, um, to find the sources and it makes it easier to recognize the ways in which different sources are speaking to each other. Uh, but the key is having a thoughtful research question, right? So if a student has a research question that um, for a variety of reasons forecloses the possibility of multiple perspectives, that's going to make things a lot harder. If you have a question, for instance, that presupposes you already have an answer. Like suppose your question says, why does the affordable, why is the Affordable Health Care Act um, a problem for our economy? Or why is the Affordable Health Care Act great for our economy? Either of those questions presupposes an answer and then you're gonna find, then, then you're gonna think about multiple perspectives only in terms of sort of pro and con. And that's really going to end up giving you just one perspective. Okay. Um, but in fact, if you, if you ask a question that allows, f that is more open-ended, that really is a question that comes from your desire to know, then you are going, then you're gonna be able to find the keywords that are going to direct you to a variety of sources and therefore a variety of perspectives. What is the purpose then of involving multiple perspectives in a research? Well, the purpose really is allowing you to learn as much as possible about the topic and about the reach of your question um, so that you are not simply mining one source and as I was saying earlier, you know, sort of heading pretty steadfastly in one direction, which can be very reassuring. Um, but which doesn't enable you to learn anything. So if you are learning what, um, for instance, um, scholars from different ideological positions, how they might approach your question, you're widening your, your knowledge in that way. If you are, if particularly, this is what Honors 110 students most often run into, is scholars from different disciplinary perspectives who are going to bring a different, um, a, a different way of understanding the question and a different approach to the question. So all of these things are going to widen the scope of your research and therefore enhance and enrich your knowledge. And probably, probably shift the focus of your question a little bit in the, in, the source of the, in the course of the research process, but that also is a widening and an enriching experience. You spoke a little bit about the ways perspectives can differ. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit more about the characteristics of those distinctions? Yes, sure. So when students, especially students who are starting out in research, um, when they approach this idea of different perspectives, they often think of it as entirely sort of polarized. The two, two different perspectives are virtually pro and con. And these, in fact, tend not to be really bringing any kind of a different perspective on a question at all. What we're looking for is differences, for instance, you, um, one of the differences that I talked about last time was different um, methodological approaches, right? So that that could be a different way, for instance, of framing a question that approaches the topic. So it can give a student a different way of understanding how, the, how, how to approach the topic, right? Um, so, that, so that would be one way in which a student might, might look at different perspectives. Um, other differences, there are different theoretical perspectives, right? Or, um, or different disciplinary perspectives. So for instance, um, an economist might approach a question um, it, from one perspective where a historian might look, for instance, at you know, the history of a particular, we were talking about healthcare before, right? So an economist might look at the effects of healthcare on, on micro or macro economies. A historian might look at the history of healthcare development in, in, right, in the United States or et cetera. So these are not simply you know, giving you a yes or no, these are giving you a different way, and again, as I said earlier, a richer way to approach the question. 
So when I approach multiple perspectives in my own research, what are some of the pitfalls that I should try to avoid? I think the largest pitfall is going to be in getting discouraged too early um, and not realizing how much the way you frame your question will shape and can enlarge the kinds of sources that you look for. So I mentioned earlier a question that presupposes a yes or no answer. And that's an easy one to avoid once you know what to look for. But, um, but there are other ways in which you can frame a question that in itself is, a, is going to be a quite fertile question by the time you get further down the road with your research, but you have framed it in such a way that it doesn't allow you to bring in more keywords or doesn't allow you to sort of do more active searches. So that's, that's the pitfall that I think students encounter the most often. And I think the way to avoid that is simply to be open to reframing and rethinking your question multiple times, particularly in the early weeks of research. Ideally, your engagement with these different perspectives is, is exactly what allows you to reframe your question or inevitably causes your question to be reframed in a way that is, is useful and almost organic. I think students worry that they need to pour over the wording of their question. In fact, what will happen if you are engaging with the research thoughtfully is that new ways of approaching your question will suggest themselves to you automatically. Well, this has been very helpful. Thank you so much for meeting with me, Dr. Samueli. My pleasure.